<laughs> okay, if you have your Bibles tonight, <clears throat> turn with me again to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 6. I want to read verses 9, 10, 11, and 12. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous toward to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord God, for this church and for every member of it. And we do pray for those tonight who are hurting, those who have problems and difficulties. We lift them up to you. We also pray for those who are traveling, <clears throat> Pray that you'd bring them safely home. I pray, Lord God, in the days to come, that we, when we all come together, we'll certainly praise you and thank you for everything that you've done. Father, we're in a new year now. Help us to really, truly live this year for you that other people might see the Lord Jesus Christ in us. And wherever we go, whatever we do, that we might truly be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Father, help us. We thank you so much for what you've already done. I thank you, Lord God, for reaching our goal in the Lottie Moon Christmas offer. And we do pray, Lord God, for our missionaries around the world. Yes, we can give our money to help, but one thing we should do, and that is continually pray for them. I pray, Lord God, that you'll continue to bless and you'll work through our missionaries wherever they are, whatever they do. I pray for my dear friend out on the Amazon who is, is ministering to those people there. In his letter, he said to me, the work is hard. You see very little results, but I can feel the movement of God. I pray, Lord, that you'll be with him. Watch over him and his family. Father, continue to be with Friendship Baptist Church. And we pray and we ask all of this in Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Amen. Well, <clears throat> these, these verses of Scripture that I've read to you here have to do with diligence and dedication to the work of the Lord God. Now, immediately after the strict warning, you remember, that he gave in verses 4 through 8, he wants you and I as Christians to move on to maturity. He wants us to become mature Christians. He says, you know, stop laying the foundation over and over again. In other words, you know what that means. You don't just keep laying the foundation of a building. You have to build it on up. And that's what many Christians do. They just lay the foundation, and that is where they stay. By the way, go back to verses... Uh, uh, six and seven or seven and eight, he, uh, he uses the contrast of God sending the rain on a field. He says some produce good crops, 
and some weeds. If you've ever lived on a farm, you know how that is. Sometimes the rain will come, you'll have good crops. Sometimes all you have is weeds that will grow up. But many Christians are like that. You know, they have all the things, the same thing. They in church, what have you. But they do not grow. Here he shares, <clears throat> here with the verses of scripture that we've looked at, he shares uh, a beautiful description, I feel, of what a life, a Christian's life should be. And he wants the readers to know he loves them and says, I believe you belong to God. He, he says, you know, knowing that. So in verse 9, you see a conclusion is drawn. Verse 9, he says, if I can get my paper out. First, he declares a relationship by using the word beloved. He likes him, he likens himself to them. There is a common love, a common bond among them. One of the things we have in our church, you have many people say, there is a, there is a wonderful spirit in this church. There's a sweet, sweet fellowship. There's love among the people. There is a common bond, and I am so thankful for that. The word persuaded means confident or convinced. He had, had, listen, he had had doubts before, but now he is convinced by their faith. And he is persuaded because, you see, now their lives demonstrate that they belong to God. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> you know, if we do not, listen to me. If your life does not demonstrate with your lives that you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, the conclusion will be drawn that you're not a Christian. You know, you hear people today say, well, gee whiz, if he's a Christian, well, I'm as good as he is. I really don't see Christ in her. People are to see the Lord Jesus Christ in you wherever you go, whatever you do. You over at Walmart, they should see Christ. Publix, wherever you go, they should see the Lord Jesus Christ because you are living out your life in a way that demonstrates that you love the Lord Jesus Christ. Also that you love one another. You know, one of the things in many churches today, there are people who, they're always fussing and fighting about nothing. Oh, they think they're fighting about something, but it's about nothing, really. But wherever you go, whatever you do, let people see the Lord Jesus Christ in you. Then notice, too, he talks about a circle that is enlarged, you know. Well, for most people, I wouldn't say for most people, but for some people, salvation is a small circle. And inside that circle is one word. You know what it is? It's heaven. Every time they talk to you, well, yeah, you are you a Christian? Yep, I'm on my way to heaven. I'm on my way to glory. I'm going to walk the streets and go. All of those things, you see. To them... To them, that's what salvation means, heaven. Now, it is a glorious truth that if you're a child of God, you're on your way to heaven. That's wonderful. That's great. But there are a lot of other things that accompany salvation. Number one, it's diligence to service. You know, when you're saved... You have a new purpose in life. Your purpose, once you're saved, your purpose is not the same thing. You know, whatever it might be, that purpose uh, uh, may be an experienced, or may be experienced in work, 
It may be a labor. It may be a ministry. Whatever it is, it gives you purpose to life. The second thing that happens when you're truly saved, when the Lord Jesus Christ comes to your heart and life, the Holy Spirit takes over your life and you'll demonstrate your Christianity by your love. You'll love. You'll love me, even though you may not like me, you see. <laughs> you'll love one another. Love. You know, whatever. Love, by the way, is unselfish. I don't know about you. Do you know that the more, the more love you give away, the more you'll have? You ever tried? You, you cannot give it away. As quick as you give it away, you know what? You'll get it back. In our house, we have a, a plaque. We've had it for years. And it says, love is not in your heart to stay. It's not love until you've given it away. That's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And that's, you know, what love really truly is. The third thing that he mentions here is that when you're saved, you begin to grow. You begin to mature. Now, I don't know about you, but look back over 2016. Did you really grow? Did you mature as a Christian? Are you a better Christian tonight than you were then? If you say no, then there's something wrong. You're not growing. You're not mature. Oh, I know. I know we all have setbacks and there'll be things, you know, that'll happen along the way. But when it's all over, done, said, you'll be a better Christian this year, 2017, than you were in 2016. I don't know about you, Terry, but you know, most of you have had children and grandchildren. Weren't you happy when you started to see them growing up? Now, yeah, when they became teenagers, you weren't too happy, maybe. But, you know, you, you're happy when you see your children grow mature. And that's what every child of God, every child of God should be able to mature. Move on. Now, we're not, none of us are ever going to be perfect. But we can mature, become better Christians along the way. Another thing that he mentioned here, and I think this is so very important, if you're going to mature, if you're going to grow, you need to exercise faith. You know, the problem that I found most of all with Christians, they go at it with a bang. They get involved. They want to do all of that. But their faith never seems to grow. Oh, they talk always about what God can do and all of those things. But they don't seem to have enough faith to believe that he can do it. i tell you something, dear friend. Whatever it is that God wants you to do, you can do it. But you're going to have to have some faith involved in it. You see. Faith comes after salvation. It's a bonus when we receive. When we're saved, it's a small circle, but I tell you something, there's a lot more involved in it than just simply going to heaven. Yeah, we all want to go to heaven. We're waiting, we're prepared. We pray that the Lord will come and take us to heaven. But you want to mature, don't you? Don't you want to become a better Christian? I think we all do. But you know, there's something else here too. 
There has to be a commitment. God, listen to me now. God takes, God takes note of your commitment. I don't know what you did, what New, Year, New Year's resolution you come up with. Perhaps you said, Lord, I'm going to read the Bible through this year. You know what he wants you to do? To read the Bible through. Don't get out there in June, July and say, too hot. I'm not doing it. Or something like that. We want to make, listen, we want to make absolutely sure that our labor is not in vain. You know, a lot of Christians, they get upset. They get upset because no one notices what they're doing. You know. Now, everybody likes to be patted on the back, yeah. But, don't get upset. If no one says to you, hey, you're doing a good job. You're really growing and mature. You know. <laughs> Let me tell you something. God knows exactly what you're doing. He knows exactly what you're doing and he knows why you're doing it. If you're doing it out of love, he knows it. If you're doing it just simply because, well, I've got to do it. A lot of people go to church that way. Oh, well, I, I, I'm going to church today. You ought to say, listen, I'm going to church today. I love to go to church today. That is what my Lord wants me to do. He wants you to read the Bible, study his word. Now, you may be in church every day. You may be in Sunday school every time a door's open. You may be over here sawing wood, cutting trees, doing whatever. And no one ever notices it. But God does. God knows exactly what you're doing. You see, our ministry, our service, is to share the belief of God with others. You know, we're to share what God has given, with, given to us. Whatever God has blessed us with, we're to share it. Yeah. I'm, I'm really, uh, somebody asked me if I played the piano. I had to say no. But this dear sweet lady can play the piano. Now that doesn't mean that every time she steps down and plays, we all got to pat her on the back and Clap her hands and what have you. That doesn't matter. But God knows what you're doing. And he's pleased. You know, it's always been an interesting thing to me. You hear someone get up and sing a song, woo, with everybody. Tremendous. Let some guy get up and give a little speech. Woo, that's great. All of those things. You know what? Preachers get up and they preach your heart out. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm waiting for that. <laughs> but it's true. But you see, the thing about it is this. God knows. He knows exactly what we're doing. And he's the one that we want to please. Not you, not me. We want to please God. But he also noticed something else here too. You've got to concentrate. 
Concentrate is urge. Concentration is urge here. They were to give themselves to God. This is a personal uh, aspect of this thing of being saved. Diligently. That means to keep at it. Keep on keeping on. By the way, our hope is to keep on to the end. We must never, never stop. Today, the wife and I went out to eat and we ran into an old friend that I knew when I first got here. He was a member of uh, Why Mama Baptist Church out there. Well, the first time I run into him, he said, listen, you got a fishing hole. I said, yeah, I think so. Let's go, he said. Well, the day I run into him over there, he was 90-some years old. And he said to me, I said, what are you doing now? He said, I'm fishing three days a week. You want to go? He's, it, you see, he's staying with it. <laughs> He's not giving up. Don't give up. But please don't give up in serving the Lord. Stay with it. Never stop. Don't turn loose. That's what he's saying. Don't give up <clears throat> until you're in glory. He says we're not to be slowful. You know what that means? I just simply mean you slow down in your service to God. This church is different. I, I have to say this. Our older people here are still at it, still going, still serving, still doing. And that's what we're to do. But in a couple of churches I've been in, you got a, a person who's 65 years old. I quit. Pastor, I would do something, but you know, I'm too old. <laughs> Thank God we still have 90, 90, 90, 96 and so forth. He's taking a little help now, but you know, he's still <laughs> at it. <still. laughs> <laughs> George. No, he's not taking that. He heard me. <laughs> oh, my. We're to do it. You know, never stop. Never give up. Not until we, we uh, come in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Finally, there is the promise of the inheritance we will receive. Now, you understand what he's saying here in these verses? First of all, you say, God, you, God saves you. Yes, you're on your way to glory. You're on your way to heaven. But that's just part of it. You start maturing. You start growing. You stay with it until the end. And you walk in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Oh, dear friend, that's what I want. That's what I want. I don't want the praise of men. You know, I want the praise of God. And as we grow, as we mature, that is exactly what will take place. God will be him. This inheritance we receive. What, well, first of all, the inheritance has to do with our life here on earth. Because you know what? God has promised that he will never leave us, nor forsake us. Never. He'll always be with you. Romans 8, 28 tells us that all things work together to good or for good to them who love the Lord. See, we're to love God. We're called according to uh, His purpose. We got to enlarge our circle, not just think always of heaven. 
I, you know, I've been around a lot of Christians in my life. And most Christians, you know, you talk to them and they'll tell you, oh, yeah, I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. Well, that is absolutely true. But there's more to it than that. We need to enlarge our circle, make a commitment unto God, concentrate our lives unto Him. But the first step, you have to be saved. You have to give your heart, your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you begin to mature. I believe honestly that every child of God wants to be a mature Christian. I think, you know, every person who is really saved and has the Holy Spirit within their lives that they want to be a mature Christian. They want to be living for God. They want to be serving God. They want to love one another. They want to love God with a heart, with a hope, with all their heart, their mind, their soul. And they want to love their neighbors as their self. But many times, we, as he said in those preceding verses, we just keep building the foundation. We start out, we're saved. We're on our way to heaven, but we never get off of that. I pray that you are a mature Christian. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, how we thank you and how we praise you. And I pray, Lord God, in my own life <clears throat> that I'll be a mature Christian, that I'll grow every day. And in this new year, Lord, help me not to just zero in on going to heaven, walking the streets of gold and all those things, but help me to realize that I'm to love you and serve you and do it with all of my heart. I'm to love my neighbors and even my enemies. Help me, Lord God, to do that. Help me to become a mature Christian. And one day, one day, when I'm in your presence, you'll say, you did your best. You've been a good sir. Oh, God, I thank you. I thank you from the depths of my heart for the opportunity to serve you and to live for you. I pray I ask all this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.